In this example, we're going to show you how to create the rocket nameplate that you can see here. We'll be looking at various vector drawing tools, from how to create arcs, to how we can offset vectors using the offset tool. We'll also be looking at how we can make use of the very powerful smart snapping options to position geometry within your part. Then we'll be looking at some of the text tools, how we can add text and edit curve and spacing. So let's go to File and Close and then we're going to go and create a new file. So I'm going to work with a single sided job. For the width I'm going to put in 12 inches. The height of my part I'd like to be 5 inches. For the material thickness I'm going to go with half inch material. Z0 position is going to be on the material surface. My XY datum position I'm going to put in the lower left hand corner. I can see that's indicated here by this red square. So let's go ahead and press OK. Now as this is a vector drawing exercise, I just want to take a moment to review my snap options before I go ahead and create any vectors. So to do that, let's go up to Edit to snap options or I could use the keyboard shortcut F4 and that's going to open up my snap options dialog box. And it's here where I'm able to control the amount of snap options that I have switched on. So I can see straight away that I've got geometry snapping that's switched on as we've got a check in that box. I also have smart snapping switched on. Again we've got that check in that box. Not only can I see that displayed here, but I can also see that in my actual view bar here. So this icon represents geometry snapping, this icon represents smart snapping. I can see that they're switched on because they're both blue. And to turn them off I can just simply click on the icon or I could just go into this form and just uncheck the various options. And so geometry snapping allows me to snap to various points within my existing geometry. For example, object centers, end points, midpoints, arc centers and intersections. And smart snapping allows me to snap to lines or extensions that really don't exist as geometry. And it's really just a useful guide for me to create or align shapes too without having the need to create construction geometry. And so when we come to create our vectors you may see various horizontal vertical lines that appear or lines going to tangent, span geometry and these are just really useful as a guide for me to align shapes or points too. Let's have a look at the snap radius. So we can see that the snap radius is currently at its default of 10 pixels. Now as I'm creating quite basic geometry I'm just going to leave it at this position as this will enable me to snap to positions within my job within a 10 pixel radius. So it just really makes it quicker and easier for me to create my geometry. So I'm happy with the snap options there so let's just go and press OK. And so the first vector I'd like to create is an arc that's basically going to represent the top of my nameplate. So to draw an arc, we come over to the Create Vectors section, and you see we've got the icon here to draw an arc. And so there's two ways that I can draw an arc. We could create that through three points, whereby I click to insert my first point, click to insert my second point, and then I can just move my cursor up or down according to how high I want that arc to go, in which case I just simply click that in place to apply that. So let's just press Ctrl Z just to undo that. And the other way is by using center start and end point. So let's have a look at that option. So here it requires me to specify my center point to begin with. So I'm going to snap to the center of my job. So I'm just going to hover somewhere around the center. You can see I've picked up the horizontal line. There's the vertical. I'm able to snap to the center of my job there. So if I click that in place, you'll see now that I'm able to drag a circle out. And this is where we need to specify the radius of the arc. Then I simply click there. And then the last point that we need to create is the end point. So this is how much of the arc you want to have in place and we can go up to 180 degrees 
and then to finish that I just simply click that in place also. Again let's just undo that by pressing Ctrl Z on the keyboard. And so to create this arc I'm going to go through three points. So I'm just going to roughly sketch an arc in place which I'm actually going to edit as I know the values of the arc that I'd like to create. And so to edit that I'm just simply going to put some values in this edit form here. So for x we're going to go with x1 for my start point, start point y is going to be 3.5 for my end point, x is going to be 11 and y is also going to be 3.5 now I don't know the radius in this case, however I know the height that I'd like that to be and that's going to be 3 quarters of an inch. Go ahead, press apply and you can see that I've got my arc in place there. So let's close that form down. So the next item I'd like to draw up will represent the bottom arc of the rocket nameplate. So to do that I'm simply just going to take this vector here and we're going to offset it and create a copy to create the bottom portion of the sign. So if that vector is selected, let's go over to Offset Vectors. And so I'd like to create an offset of this vector that is 3 inches below it. Now in the Offset Vectors form, you can see we've got three options. We can go outwards or right, inwards or left, or both. Now outwards and inwards is for closed vectors. Now because we're working with open vectors we're going to look at right or left. And the way to know which way you'd like to go is look at your start point. So you can see our start point here represented by this black square. Now imagine being stood on that start point and you're looking down your vector. Do I want to offset to the right of this vector or do I want to offset to the left? Now in this case I'd like to offset to the right, so I'm going to use the right option here. Then we specify a distance, in this case I'd like to go 3 inches. I'm going to make sure all three of these options are unchecked, I don't need those checked in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and press offset and you'll see that we've got our new offset vector 3 inches to the right of the start point. So let's close that form down. Now I'd like to look at joining the two vectors with a straight line. One way I could do this is by using the polyline tool to join them up and then look at using the join vectors option here. Or I could simply just take the top vector, shift and select the second and then use this option here to join or close vectors with a straight line. And that's going to input a straight line to join them up. So you can see we've got one there. I need to look at doing the other one. So again with that vector selected, let's just simply go ahead and join with a straight line. Now I'd like to create a border. So with that vector selected, I'm actually going to go and offset that vector. And this time I'm going to offset that inwards. Now as we're working with a closed shape, this is where we look at outwards or inwards. I want to create a vector that's going to sit inside, so we'll use the inwards option. I'm going to specify a distance. In this case, I'd like to go inwards by 3 eighths of an inch. Now the software has a really nice feature in that I can actually type in calculations into any of these entry boxes and it will just calculate my calculation for me. For instance, I could type in 3 slash 8 and then equals and then it will give me the numerical value. So now I could go ahead and press offset You'll see I've got that offset there, got my border in place, and it's inwards by 3 eighths of an inch. And I could close that down. Now I'd like to look at drawing some drill holes that I'd like to place in the centre of this point here and this point here. And so we're going to look at how we can use Smart Snapping to help me find that midpoint between two different points. So to draw a circle, let's go over to Create Vectors. I'm going to use the option here, Draw Circle. So here I can specify a radius or a diameter. In this case, I'd like to go with an eighth of an inch, so we're going to type in 0 0.125. And now I need to just click in my job to create that circle. Now, as I said, I want to create a circle that's going to go in between this point here and this point here. So let's have a look at how the Smart Snapping will enable me to find that point. 
So I'm just going to hover over this point here, so it's this corner here that you can see here. And I'm going to hover over this point here to wake that point up. Then I'm going to go back, and you'll see we've got a green line. That green olive line represents a connecting line. You can also see that I'm presented with a point that is showing me the midpoint of those two points. So I can snap to that point, and I can simply click and input my circle. So you can see how handy that is to find in the midpoints of different vectors by just using smart snapping. Let's do the same again for the bottom here. So I'm going to hover over this point here to wake it up. I'm going to hover over the next point to wake it up there. I'm just going to go back on myself and you'll see the olive line, that connecting line, and I can see that that midpoint there has been displayed and I'm able to click and snap to it. And there are my two circles. So let's close that down. With that circle selected, I'm going to hold down Shift and I'm going to select this circle here. What I'd like to do is create a mirrored copy of those horizontally so that we input circles into these points here. So those selected, let's go over to Mirror Selected Objects. I'm going to flip that about the job center. So it's going to go over the center. We want to create a mirrored copy. And then we're going to specify that we're going to flip that horizontally. And you can see they've been input in place there. So let's just close that down. So now I just want to make sure everything is aligned to the center of my job. So I'm just going to draw a box just in my normal selection mode. This is going to highlight everything for me so you can see that they're all selected. And then I'm going to go ahead and press F9 on the keyboard. That's going to align everything centrally to my job. Now the next thing I'd like to do is look at introducing some text to my sign. So to draw text, we simply come up to Create Vectors. And we're going to use the Draw Text option. And so here we're presented with a text box that I can type my word or sentence into. So here we're just going to type in the word rocket, all in capitals. We select what type of font we want that to be. In this case, we're going to go with true type font there. Then we need to choose the font. Okay, so we're just going to use this drop down arrow, and the software will just find all of the fonts that you have on your system. In this case, what I could do is I could search for my font using this uh, scroller here, or I could simply just start to type in the name of the font. Okay, now I know that I want to work with the Arial font, so I'm going to type in A, R, and I, and you'll see that it's just found that there for me, so I can go ahead and select it. Choose if you want that to be bold or italic. In this case, I'd like my rocket text to be bold. Then we choose our text alignment. In this case, I'd like that to be in the center there. Text height for this, I'm going to type in a value of 1.2 inches. Then I could go ahead and press apply. Okay, so I can see it's been added. The center point is at uh, 0, 0 in here. So if I wanted to shift it along, I could change the X value to make that 6. Press apply. You can see it's been moved along 6 inches in X. And so when you're happy with the way that the text looks, you could just simply close the form down. Now I'd like to align this text to the center of my job. So I'm going to take that and I'm simply just going to ping that up and I can see, judging by the vertical and horizontal lines, that I'm in my job center there. So I'm just going to click to position that in place. And so one final thing that I'd like to do to this text is I'd like to give it a little bit more curvature so that it matches that of the sign that we have. And I'd also like to look at editing the spacing between each one of these letters. Now we have a tool that can do both of those. That's under Create Vectors and it's Edit Text Spacing in Curve, also known as Kerning. And if I click on that, you'll see that I now have uh, a green square above and below the center of my text. And I also have a white square in the center there. So that white square enables me to move my text around. So I'm just going to press Ctrl Z just to put that back in position there. And then the green squares allows me to control the curvature. So you can see when I pull that, we can have some curvature going up. And I could bring that back down. Or I could pull on the one underneath just to bring that down there. In this case, we want to go up. We want to match the curvature of 
this sign that we've got here. So I'm just going to pull that up, just roughly by eye, put that in place. I can see it pretty much matches the curvature of the sign there. So the next thing I'd like to do is alter the spacing between each one of these letters. To do that, if I bring my cursor in between two characters, you'll see that I've got two arrows pointing at each other. And if I click, it just means it's going to bring those letters closer together. Now in this case, I'd like to do the opposite. So I'm going to hold down Shift. Now you'll see that the arrows are in opposing directions. So I'm going to click, click again, and you'll notice that the space is being increased between the two characters. So I'm going to click again. I'm going to go between the O and the C the C and the K, K and E, and E and the T, just to space them out a little bit more. I just want to do that again over here. You can see that I now have quite a, a bigger space than what we had before in between each of those letters. Okay, let's just go back into normal selection mode. And we can take a look at that as a whole. So now what I'd like to do is take that rocket text and just nudge it down the y-axis just so it doesn't look so top heavy to the top side of the sign. So I'm going to take that text and then just using the down arrow key I'm just going to bring that down. So I just press that down once. Let's have a look at how it looks again. Okay, so I think that's too far down. So I'm just going to take that back up. That seems to be a bit more central. Now looking at the text and comparing it to the shape of my sign I can see on the right hand side it appears as though I have a lot more space than that of the left hand side between the R and the left side of the sign. And that's purely due to the shape of the T. And so it gives me the look that there's more space on the right hand side here. So I'm just going to select it. I'm going to go back into Edit Text Spacing and Curve. You'll see that now that we've already edited the shape, we're now presented with the red and blue handles. And the red handles enable me to just move my text along the curve. And so what I could do is just look at nudging that over just to the right a little in order for us to sort of even out that spacing. Okay, so that's not too bad. Let's put it back into selection mode. So that completes this drawing exercise. Now there is a follow-up tutorial to this video that discusses the 2.5D toolpaths in order for us to cut this sign out. You can find that in the related videos. So let's go to File, Save As, and in the Rocket Nameplate Project folder, I'm going to rename this to Rocket Nameplate Vector Drawing, press Save, and then you can access that from the Project folder.